the next section for framing will be for the roofs. And I've divided it up into three sections. One will be the segment on the far left hand side of your screen for the shed roof over the kitchen. There's a series of three different beams that will support that. In the center of the model are the curved beams over the living area. And then on the far right hand side are just a series of eye joists with some decorative beams on the edges. So let's go into the program and take a look. I have the completed model open to give you a better idea of what we're going to be looking at. This area over on the left hand side is the kitchen. You'll notice the three beams that extend through and they actually connect into a beam that spans the area between the kitchen and living. Now the next section is in the center. I've got a series of three curved beams with eye joists over the top and then the far right hand side has only decorative beams that are on the ends of the gable walls. I have returned back to the model that we're working on without the roof framing and in my split screen view on the 3D side you can see that our floor framing is in place. I've extended the posts up from the bottom floor and added one more post on the far right hand side. On my plan view I'm on the second floor and I've turned on my roof planes and I'm actually using a layer set if you are opening this sample plan and following along. I've created a layer set called framing roof set so it isolates the components that I'm most interested in seeing as we draw these roof items and framing members. The first structural member that we're going to draw is between the living and kitchen area. This roof plane, you can see the slope indicator is sloping back towards the house. It also slopes back towards the house in a compound slope. Using the roof beam tool, I'll come in and drag out our roof beam in this area. A little bit difficult to see. If I reorient my view a little bit, you can see the slope of that. And we'll go ahead and change the colors and and materials when we're finished. The next roof beam that I want to draw is the one that follows the shed kitchen slope. Over in my 3D view I'll come over and draw out that right along the wall until it snaps into the beam and then zoom in and position that. I'll slide it back to the roof and then I'm going to actually slide that over parallel with the post. So we'll just slide that in so it is parallel with the post. Check our connection back in this area and it's OK. Now I'm going to select both of these roof beams and make an edit. Both of those roof beams selected, I'm going to actually remove the automatic height and on the raise and lower, I'm going to lower that 21 inches. That is the thickness for the eye joist that I'm going to put on top of those beams. Click the apply button, select OK, and you'll notice in the 3D view now that beam has now rested on top of the post. While in this view, let's go ahead and match our material. I'm going to grab the brown off of that, make sure that I'm in stain mode, and then paint both of the beams that we have selected. The next step is to just take that beam and make two copies of it. And in the floor plan view, let's actually turn on our CAD layer for guidelines. And again, if you're using CAD guidelines, all that is is a line that I use to help myself align things. Here's my center line. I'm going to take the beam, use the copy tool, reflect that around the center, and then one more time I'll create a copy of it and I'll just pull it over here and again use the center tool and center it on the main line for the guideline. As you can see both of those beams extend well past where I want them to and I have a guideline that is along that wall. I'm going to select it, use my trim tool, and just drag a line through the two beams and trim those two pieces off. Now you can see the way our beams have come in. In my finished model, I went to the effort and placed the post connectors to the beam. I also took the cross section and added the detail for the post connection to the beam also in the floor that we did earlier in the diagram to show the truss connection to the I-beam and then the pan deck that extends out over the patio. And those details are in the sample plan set and the model if you're following along. In the center of the structure we have a curved roof beam. The nice thing about the tools in Chief Architect is it will follow the envelope of the ceiling or roof and automatically do the work for you. So back in the program we're going to use these same tools that we did over the kitchen and I'm just going to draw our roof beam right over the top of this wall. We'll kind of move it in and position it. 
right over the top of that wall. And again, I'm going to open that up, change it from an automatic height. I'm going to lower it 21 inches. That is the thickness of the eye joist for the roof. And then once I have that set up in the 3D view, let's just match our materials off of the other beams. And then I can simply come into the plan view and select that. Use the copy tool, reflect around the center and then one more copy of it and we'll just pull that into the center of the design and I'll just use my center tool here center it right on that line and I now have the curved roof beams in place I'll need to add the posts to support those which I'll do after we go through and add the eye joists that will bear on top of the curved beams and the shed beams and then we'll add it on to the area off to the left hand side of the diagram here that have no beams that will be supporting the roof. Just the walls will support that. Again, I'll work left to right. Beginning in the kitchen, I'm going to place the eye joists. We'll trim those off, add our eye joists over the center of the structure, and then finally the eye joists off to the far right hand side. In my split screen view, I'm going to work in my floor plan view here on the left hand side. I'm going to choose the rafter and drag that over the top of the roof plane in this area right in here and then we'll zoom in and position that right to the edge of the roof beam and I'm going to open that up and underneath the type of lumber I'm going to change that to an eye joist select OK and now I will use the multiple copy tool which is set to an interval of 24 inches and just run a copy of those all the way down the roof and with the line selected for our CAD guideline. I'm going to select that, use the trim tool, and just drag a line right through those elements that we want trimmed off. And now you can see that trimmed it right to that bearing beam on the other hand, on the other side of the screen. Just a reminder, this design is a little bit more custom than typical houses. I'm doing the manual framing and I showed you earlier in the floor framing that you can automatically frame the structure. And you could do the same thing with this structure, but I want precise control, so I'm manually drawing these components in. It's not something you necessarily have to do. I'm just trying to illustrate that part of the manual drawing in this video. In the center structure, we're going to do the same operation on my floor plan view. I'm going to choose my roof rafter tool and zoom out here a little bit and I'm just going to drag a rafter right over the top of the roof plane and again I'm going to open that up and change it to an eye joist and then I'm going to position it to the edge of the roof and then we'll do a multiple copy. So I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to use a point to point move select point to point move I'm going to come off the edge here click and come over here and click and place that rafter eye joist right where I want it, multiple copy, and we'll just pull that all the way around. And this last joist, let's just zoom in, and again we'll use the point to point move. Come down here, and I'll pick that point, and slide it over on top of the last part of that roof beam. If I maximize the 3D view, you can see our R joists are bearing on top of the beams, and now the last section is off to the right. Using the rafter tool, I'll come in off of the roof plane, drag the rafter over, position it over the top of the wall, change it to an eye joist, select OK. And now I'm going to use the multiple copy tool on 24 inch on center and slide a copy of those all the way down the design. Zoom in on this side of the wall, pull that in. And now in this area right in here, maybe a little bit easier to see, we haven't built our wall framing yet, but the curved roof section overlaps the shed roof section. And I need to trim these eye joists off that intersect into that area. And to do that, same thing that we have been doing is I'll select the line that has drawn in that area. Using the trim tool, I'll just come in here, trim these off, and I'll go ahead and just pull this one back since I missed it. And then again, I'll just use the trim tool and trim some of these off. And now I've trimmed that area right in there so that when we build our wall on that overlap, those eye joists are correctly positioned for their length. 
I've completed the major components with the beams in the kitchen, the curved beams over the living area, and then placing all the eye joists. In the next segment, we'll look at adding our steel infrastructure. We've added a few of the posts, and then we'll wrap it up by completing our wall framing.